Uh... Hi! I'm Arthur. And this video is probably going to skirt the line of me talking about just how depraved Slanesh is while also trying not to get my video deleted in my channel banned. Yes! Uh, we are going to be talking about Slanesh whom I think is one of the more important chaos gods in the entire setting of 40k. I want to give a bit of a brief overview of their lore, where they come from, and a bit of a rough summation of the demons that amass under them. So, um, content warning for, like, everything. I, I know the meme is that Slanesh was birthed into existence because the Eldar had a massive blood orgy fueled by psychic super drugs, but to be fair, that's not too far off from what actually happened. For the uninitiated, Eldar are basically psychic space elves that feel emotions like ten times more intense than any other race. So with what you know about the Chaos Gods, the warp, and everything they're in, you should know there was probably some fuckery bound to happen at some point. During the heyday of the Eldar, there were only th the three Chaos Gods of Korn, Nurgle, and Zinch, which kinda kept to themselves. But that changed, as you can see, so why did it? So in simplest terms, when you are a race of hyper-advanced beings, being almost perfectly immortal, being able to resurrect and reincarnate perfectly upon death, you might get a little bored after a few thousand years of trying the finest wines in the galaxy, as well as going to watch fencing matches with the bros. Soon enough, things started to become... The hedonistic, to put it lightly. Sex, drugs, loud music, and all manner of nastiness began to unfold in the Eldar society. When you mix the concept of a race that feels emotions a lot more intense than any other race, they are also psychic, and there is the immaterial space where strong emotions become tulpa demon monsters. Take that mix, put it all together, shake it up for a couple hundred years, maybe a thousand years, and you have yourself a chaos god obsessed with hedonism, with the side goal of claiming all Eldar souls. You see, Slanesh was born of the Eldar, and thusly is an Eldar god. Therefore, they do have a legit claim to Eldar souls alongside the other Eldar gods. So in theory, Slanesh would have to compete with other Eldar gods to get souls of the hedonism obsessed race. Which, considering, you know, god of hedonism, the race is already pretty freaking depraved right now, be pretty easily done, right? So that was in theory. In practice, yeah, Slanesh just opted to kill more or less every Eldar god, so they had a claim to every Eldar soul without anybody to contest that. Which, without waiting, Slanesh decided to take every single Eldar soul at the same time. Yeah, when Slanesh was born, they just cut out the middleman and consumed over 99% of the Eldar race in, like, a minute? <laughs> it was kind of nutty. Er, mind the pun, I guess. And thus, real space was torn open, chaos started leaking more regularly into the universe, and everyone was a little more fucked than before. Okay, that one was intentional, sorry. With Slanesh being born, small cults were being erected all across the universe in their honor. Uh, I know one of the most important ones in terms of the fiction is the Lair, a race of weird snake people obsessed with depravity, were pretty prominent and responsible for one twink falling to the dark side. Now, there is a little bit of discourse over what Slanesh looks like and what gender they even are. As you've probably noticed, I tend to stick with they them pronouns mostly because in the lore it makes the most sense. Humanity tends to refer to them uh, with masculine pronouns and the Eldar tend to refer to them with feminine. But as I understand it, Slanesh as a concept is supposed to represent beauty, perfect beauty. An attraction that transcends all traditional concepts of gender and so on and so forth. They are supposed to kind of look like the perfect mix of both feminine and masculine and everything in between and beyond. It's why all of their demons are kind of like hyper androgynous and have a singular tit. So yeah, um, a gender type beat. 
but to segue into the demons of Slanesh, they obviously fall into various categories from lesser to greater, each one embodying the concepts of depravity and hedonism, the lowest rung of these demons being called the demonettes, each equipped with weird crab claws, which is a common thing for Slanesh for some reason. Like, I kind of get it, and I kind of don't? You'd think they would go for something sinister and, like, inherently linked with hedonism and, like, the concept of sin in, like, an allegorical sense. Serpents or reptiles or something like that. B but nah, they get the offensive uh, capabilities of a crab. Okay. But yeah, in terms of aesthetic, they all have the, the weird crab claws and come in different shades of lilac, which is very nice, and tend to manifest in areas of greatest sin and depravity. And on the highest rung, aside from the demonettes, you have what are called the Keepers of Secrets which are the greater demons of Slanesh. They represent the greatest potential for corruption. They are usually perfectly androgynous and about 15 to 20 feet tall, cause like, <laughs> you know, someone's into it. Carrying various weapons and adorned with the finest silks. If you see one of these things on the battlefield, you know things are pretty fucked because they are some of the most dangerous beings in the setting without being a named character. Just being around mortals can cause them to fall into a puddle of their own juices without consent, which is... Ew. But it is usually followed by them cutting you in half. An interesting fact is, in the last, I think, five years, the Keeper of Secrets got a new model and new update in the lore as to what they look like. So this is what they used to look like. Yeah, that kind of sucks. And this is what they currently look like, and I really like the new model, though the one boob thing kind of... Yeah, it's weird to me. But I get it, but I... Uh, aesthetical preferences aside, there is a new character that they announced alongside the new range, and that's uh, Shalaxi Hellbane. I think Shalaxi Hellbane is kind of cool, because their concept is they represent the martial perfection and the uh, glory in combat angle. Not in like a corn way where like you're besting strong foes, but to make sure that you have like the egotistical pride of the, hey, I'm the best one here and I beat every single one of you. So their whole gimmick is they find and s kill uh, the strongest demons of chaos they can from opposing gods. Alongside uh, keepers and demonettes, uh, you have kind of those in-between categories of demons that are just kind of weird and usually just workhorse animals, like the fiends, which are, yeah, I don't know what this is. It's like an anteater cross with a crab, cross with a bug, cross with a horse, and it has like, in the original model, if I remember correctly, it had like a row of like six tits going down like one side of the body. It was weird. I think the new one has it too. They're especially weird because they secrete a, a thick musk that clouds the air around them called the soporific musk, and it's essentially like heroin gas that if you breathe it in, you just immediately go into a stupor. Then you have Seekers. Uh, hi, this is Editor Arthur. Uh, I'm just going back through the video now and realize that, like, I called these things the, the, the Seekers, when in fact a Seeker is the demon that's riding on top of it, which is just a normal demonette, and the horse thing that they're riding, I shit you not, is actually called a, a steed of Slanesh. It's literally just called a Slanesh horse. That's fucking stupid. But yeah, so just whenever I say Seeker, just know that I'm talking about like the thing underneath, which is actually just called a steed of Slen. It's just a titty horse for fuck. Which my community uh, affectionately just refers to as the titty horses, because it's kind of what they're used for. Seekers on their own, you'll never find as like a model. They're usually just around sucking things with their big tongue. The only time you'll ever see them in combat sense is when you see demonettes riding on top of them, or in like a fantasy setting, like humans. Or until like uh, the Emperor's Children get a codex update, you're probably going to see some Emperor's Children riding the fucking titty horses. Slanesh as a concept is one of the most interesting aspects of 40k. A god of depravity that will reward you for just doing what you want. So for cults to work under Slanesh, all you have to do is just 
seek pleasure, seek excess, seek what you want, be it the finest foods in the entire universe, be it the, the best sex, be it the best whatever. If you seek it, and you seek it with a great level of gusto, you will get rewarded by Slanesh, and that's why it's probably the easiest to fall to them. Regardless, that was basically everything you need to know to understand Slanesh in terms of like the basic concepts of them. They just want you to do what you want and keep wanting to do what you do in the worst possible way. So, thanks for watching. As per the usual, uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know if I missed anything important. Warhammer lore is fucking hard to parse through a lot of times, uh, so it can be tough to get all the pertinent bits out. The takeaway message is that Slanesh can corrupt all. Unless your name is Jagatai fucking Khan.